All right, folks, before I sit down on the table and focus on each of these items and tell you a few words about it, I wanted to show you everything that will be a part of the video today. I have some AliExpress rods from $30 to $70, I think. I have a few AliExpress reels. I have some wars and even some jig heads if I have time to get to them. But all of this is AliExpress tackle that, uh, believe it or not, when I was buying it, I had the intentions to do separate reviews on each of these. But I am so far behind with my reviews. And some of these items are like one, one and a half years old. So I decided to lump all of them together in one video today and be done with them. Okay, the first product I'm going to show you is this Rosewood Ultralight Fishing Rod. You know, all of these AliExpress rods look so shiny and blingy. Even though components are cheap, they look very attractive and they kind of look more expensive than the same product would look in United States. Here is the first guide over here. Of all of the Chinese rods that I have, this one comes with the smallest first guide. Pinky will not go through at all. Probably a smaller first guide than my new Abu Garcia Eradicator rod. However, notice that the guide is black colors like gunmetal. I, I hate shiny chrome for you know paint for guides. This real seat over here that's the same real seat you'll find on maybe I don't know half maybe more than half of the spinning ultralight rods on AliExpress are gonna have this real seat here. But unlike everybody else usually the real seat looks like this okay but unlike everybody else, they did not leave this thin blank here just like that, exposed. They put a piece of carbon, okay, it's not carbon, most likely it's plastic. I really appreciate this piece here. Every rod who is using this real seat needs to put some piece of plastic or carbon preferably to improve sensitivity here. Because you have your hand on top of this and it just doesn't, this piece here doesn't feel good. I'm surprised nobody else is putting another piece here. Also, unlike everybody else, they have a small piece here. They did include, this is the nut that screws up and down, a large nut. It just looks nicer and it's easier to work with. Otherwise, the rest of the handle you will see. It's shorter or longer, but everything else in these Chinese rods, they have different names, but I feel the entire ultralight rod population on AliExpress is made of five components. That's it. Different names, but they have only five components. The rod does come with two tips. The, the second tip is here for $30, guys. That includes shipping. You get a rod with a spare tip. If you ever see one of my rods where the cork looks like this, it is not sealed. That means I haven't fished this rod. I do not fish with a rod before I seal it, because why do damage? I always seal them first. You can see over here, sealed, sealed, not sealed. Why didn't I fish this rod? This rod has some very strange problem that is like a terminal, terminal just fatal problem for me. You see the connection here for the two pieces. And I don't know if you can tell, but the piece on top of the rod is thicker than the piece under the rod. And it's not just that it's visibly thicker, but it is also stiffer and heavier than the bottom section. And so what happens when you load the blank is that instead of the blank starting to load from the tip first, you keep loading it and loading it, it starts to bend from the middle before it bends in the tip. Just because the tip is so stiff and thick and heavy. 
So the rod doesn't have a fast action, doesn't have a slow action. I don't mind fast action, I don't mind slow action. It has some unbelievable, unreal action where it starts to bend from the middle and the tip is too stiff to play a fish, even though it's an ultralight rod. So just because the blank was so weird, I never fished that rod. I just hate the feeling of this rod in my hand. I never fished it. Next product I'm going to show you is Royal Spirit S 5'6 Ultralight. This rod over here. Now I have a video of me fishing this rod for first time. I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description. Make sure it, you check it. It's kind of funny. But the first time I fished this rod, it broke. It broke right over here. Let me show you how it broke. I don't know if I'll be able to focus. The blank is not that thin. I expected to find a super thin blank. This is not a thin blank. I have blanks much thinner than this that didn't break. Definitely that little crappy was not enough to break the rod. I know people told me I'm high sticking, whatever. Come on, I've, I've caught a few thousand 8 inch crappy. I know when an 8 inch crappy uh, can break a rod. But I said in the video, I wasn't joking, I really liked the jigging sensation of this rod. This rod is super sharp when jigging. It feels like a, a sniper, like a J Japanese rod. Maybe because it's only five foot six. But jigging with this rod was very sensitive. Control was incredible. It felt so light. It balanced so good with this Daiwa Theory 2000 reel. I mean, I really loved the feeling. The action of the rod is it's a fast action rod, but everything is good. I mean, everything about this rod, I really liked. And I thought this was an accident, so I ordered another one. So let's remove the broken one away. So I used the second one after the accident and I've caught a few hundred tiny crappy and some small bluegill with it. Never tried with a yellow bass or white bass, but it did just fine. So I will keep using this rod as long as, you know, until it breaks. I actually wanted to buy more of this Royal Spirit rod, but when I was browsing AliExpress, I found that the Royal Spirit is discontinued and it, the rod just had a lot of negative feedback about the tips breaking. It wasn't just me guys. I think there was just quality control issue and the tips were brittle and they were just snapping left and right. So I believe what the vendors did is they discontinued the old model, they made a small change and they started selling the same rod under the name Stream Angler. Okay, Specifications are almost the same. It's still 5 foot 6. I mean, look at the components here. Again, this is not sealed because I haven't used this rod, but all of the components are the same. I can show you the guides here. Oh, sorry about the scratching. The guides are identical. These two rods on the pictures appeared to be identical, but they did make some changes to the rod to address the, the brittle tips. So what happened is the new rod now comes with two tips instead of one. So I thought, okay, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to use the second tip to put on the rod that is broken. Am I not smart? So I buy the new rod, the Stream Angler. It came with these two tips here. Again, the guides look the same as on the rod I broke. However, what I found was that the new tips they are using for the Stream Angler rod are completely different from the tips that the Royal Spirit used to have. The Royal Spirit used to have a very sharp, very light tip with excellent action. This tip seems to be, other than the guides, seems to be the same tip that the Rosewheel rod 
that I mentioned has. It is very thick, very heavy and very stiff. So the rod again, when you put it on top of the, when you put the tip on top of the rod, the rod starts to bend from the middle before it bends from the tip. So they fixed the issue with the brittle tips by reinforcing the tips too much and just made the tips way too heavy, way too stiff, way too not ultralight. Okay, the next rod we're going to review is this Ace Hawk. Let me show you the case here because it's worth showing. Ace Hawk Double IM8. The rod does come with two tips. I'll talk about them in a second. Six foot two piece ultra light slash light. One of the tips is light, one of the tips is ultra light. But look at this case or whatever cover. The case for this rod is really soft and thick and just feels expensive. As a matter of fact, I believe this is the exact case that Tsuri Noya rods use. The rod uses the exact same guides that the Royal Spirit and Stream Angler and all of the other ultralight rods on uh, AliExpress use. These are just steel frames with aluminum oxide inserts. There is actually nothing wrong with these guides other than they're a little bit heavy, but I actually prefer these over the steel only guides that don't even have aluminum oxide inserts. But here are the two tips and I can agree with the power that is described in the label of this rod. You can see the ultra light tip is significantly thinner than the light tip. And indeed the power of this guy is light. The power of this guy, I don't know if it's ultra light because the tip is ultra light. This is a solid tip. It, it really bends. It's, it's an extra fast action. It bends from the solid section right away, but then it stiffens really, really fast. And after the third guide, when you come to the fourth guide, the two sections seem to be identical. So I wouldn't say this is an ultralight rod just because you put a solid tip at the very tip of one of the sections. Because the rest of the rod is still very, very stiff. So I never used this tip with this particular, you know, lower section because it just feels weird. I just used the light power with, uh, with this rod. And I paired it with this tattoo here with 4 pound fluorocarbon. And this has been my uh, white bass rod, light power. I mean, it, it balances really well with this tattooer. And I actually have nothing bad to say about this Ace Hawk rod. It hasn't broken. I got a lot of white bass with it. It's light power, fast action, kind of. No wobble at all, very easy to jig with it. The handle is, I don't know if it's sensitive. Once you go into light power, sensitivity becomes not as good as ultra light. But for what it's worth, it's very comfortable and very well balanced. This rod is very well balanced, very easy to jig with. But yeah, if you want to go buy this rod, I actually have no problem with it. As long as you use it as a light power rod, not ultra light. Now I mentioned before that all of these ultra light rods on AliExpress are made of five or six components. And they all have the tips interchangeable. So this is the ultra light tip of the Ace Hawk that I said I don't want to use with the Ace Hawk rod because the, the base of the Ace Hawk rod is just too stiff to be an ultra light with whatever the tip. However, the tip did fit my broken Royal Spirit rod. It's still kind of stiff in the midsection. But overall, I find it pretty good, you know, or at least good enough. So this is how I'm going to be using the broken Royal Spirit rod now with the tip from the Ace Hawk. Overall, if you buy a few of these Chinese rods and one of them has two tips and one of them breaks, you'll be able to swap them and make at least one rod that you like.
Okay, now let's talk about Tsurinoya. Tsurinoya is probably the most popular brand on AliExpress and the brand with the best reputation. And so many of you told me to go check Tsurinoya because they're really good. Well, I couldn't buy a single Tsurinoya spinning rod just because of their obnoxious colors. I just cannot tolerate these colors. However, they make also bait casting rods and those came with a normal black or dark gray color. I think it's dark gray. And I did get one of these. That's this one here. Tsurinoya Dragon 6 foot 2 pieces ultralight. The case is identical to the much cheaper Ace Hawk rod. Okay, first about the rod. I really like the rod. I can confirm the power is ultralight as it says. There is no wobble even though it's an ultralight rod. You can jig with this rod if you want. The tip is reasonably sharp. The action is fast but very smooth and continuous and the blank will bend all the way to the middle if you load up with a good fish. Everything is good on this rod, except sensitivity. Sensitivity is not comparable to one of my ultralight spinning rods. For example, if you compare the Royal Spirit that I told you that snapped, but the second one, that spinning rod, it's, it costs $30, less than half of this rod. But still, you can detect bites there a lot easier. With this guy, you cannot detect bites easy. The most fish that I caught with this rod was perch on Lake Michigan, dropping down micro blades uh, with this rod. And I caught a lot of perch, but I never enjoyed, I don't know, I didn't enjoy fishing with this rod because I don't know, I can't feel the bites, I eventually just see the tip of the rod bent and when I start reeling, there is no drag sound, the blank kind of kills all of the vibrations from the fish. You catch fish, but it's not as enjoyable as my spinning combos, that's why I haven't used it much. But the other problem I have with this rod is, it's not the quality. The quality seems to be fine, the blank is fine, the guides are fine, everything works good and it's reliable, it's not gonna break on you. But the problem with this rod is the value. I mean, the price is, I mean, I forgot what I paid for it, it's 60 or $70, but you get into a price range where you have some stiff competition even in United States, even in Japan, you can buy a good rod for $60. For example, if you ask me, would I recommend this rod or Shimano Sensi Light? They sell ultralight bait casting version. I would say just go get the Shimano Sensi Light for 60 bucks. Even for 50, you can find it. And you have a Shimano rod. One day you wanna sell it, you know, you put an ad in Craigslist or eBay or somewhere and you type Shimano, you get some clicks, you get some traffic. Your old used rod has some value. Who wants to buy a used Chinese rod? So unfortunately, while I have nothing bad to say about the product, Tsurinoya does seem to make good rods. At the price that it sells these rods, it's still difficult to recommend this rod, even though I can agree that the quality of this rod seems to be a little bit higher than the other Chinese rods on AliExpress. Now I paired this rod with this uh, another AliExpress reel, GH100. It has many names. The color really seems to match the blank perfectly and the weight of the reel balances with the rod perfectly. If you want to try a BFS combo from AliExpress, this is really a good combo. It looks good, it balances good, it feels good for jigging. But that's about it. Uh, this reel does not feel expensive. The gears inside of it are not that smooth. The line management, I can't spin this rod here in the room, I have no space, but it, the line lay is a little bit loaded heavier on the left than on the right. 
the the knobs are kind of too thick for my for my taste you shouldn't have such thick knobs on ultralight reel they say that this rod has ultralight spool and can cast ultralight jigs it cannot this rod cannot cast one gram jig like my spinning rods can get these illusions out of your head that you can cast crappy jigs and trout jigs with this rod you will not However, if you want to use it with a 3 gram blade baits like I am, uh, 3 grams and over, yeah, you're going to use it just fine and the blank is strong. It, the, the combo feels good. The problem is it's $110. You are no longer competing with, you know, cheap Chinese stuff. You're competing with some good products and I still have hard time recommending the real or the rod. Now, Tsurinoya also makes some BFS bait casting reels to go with their ultralight bait casting rods. And I bought the first one, you can see Tsurinoya, the first one says XF50L. And they made another version now, Fox something or I forgot, but the color was purple and ugly again and I cannot own it. Even this red is a little bit too much for me, but I like the reel and I got it anyway. And I actually don't regret getting this reel. The gears in this reel are much smoother than this GX100. The clutch is better. I mean, I enjoy, I actually enjoy spinning and using this reel. Whatever this can cast, maybe 3 grams, this one cannot even cast 3 grams. This one you probably need 4 grams if you want to cast without being afraid of, of backlash. The other nice thing about this reel is this amazing handle here. It has very thin aluminum knobs. The handle on this reel is so amazing that if one day I threw the whole reel and I only kept the handle, I believe this handle alone is still worth the $50. It is metal, it is strong, it's not gonna break even though it's cut, it's long. I like long handles. And these aluminum knobs, man, the feeling, I love this handle. I can put this handle on any of my other reels and not feel bad that I bought this reel. However, BFS, it is not. It weighs a lot more than this reel and I could not use it with their own Tsurinoya rod because it was just too heavy and these aluminum knobs here were tilting the whole combo to the left. The balance was just no good. You cannot use this reel with this rod. I've also bought a bunch of lures from AliExpress over the years and I gotta be honest with you, I never found a real gem where I can just go and recommend it to you guys. The one thing that is common among all of these wars is when you open them, they really stink on cheap rubber, but kind of unpleasant smell like an, like an automotive tire or something. If you buy the same war from Berkeley, it, it might look the same, maybe even the action is similar, but at least the Berkeley war smells organic. Sometimes it is organic, sometimes it's biodegradable and whatnot. Otherwise, they will all work, I can confirm, for white bass and yellow bass. All of them will work. Also, none of them will work for crappie. I have not found a single lure that I want to buy again for crappie. I do use some Japanese micro wars and I don't find a substitute for these wars here in the United States. The stuff in the United States is a little bit too big and a little bit too stiff and the action is really not the same as the Japanese. But these AliExpress, you know, wars here are really not an alternative to the Japanese stuff. Just get this out of your head. Okay, let's finish the video with some crappy jigs. These are two different hooks. I already put the lead on top of them and I painted them. And the only difference between them seems to be that one has slightly longer shank than the other. The one on the bottom has longer shank than the other. 
but all of the Chinese jigs that I found seem to have kind of some common traits. First of all, this eye here, the eye seems to stick so much from, from the shank of the hook. This is a common feature on cheap hooks. It sticks out so much that I believe it interferes in the, in the hook set because if the fish kind of bites the whole thing, it will bite on the eye and cannot get snagged on the tip. So the tip is actually naturally not that open. I get the pliers and on purpose I open the tip of the hook a little bit. So it's a little bit on top of the eye here and I can still catch the fish. The other common trait of all Chinese jigs that I got is the wire is always a little bit too thick for my taste, okay? For sure thicker than anything that you would buy from Japan. It's not really Eagle Claw, it's not really Mazuo, they do make their own hooks, but the wire is just a little bit too thick on all of them. And the final thing that I don't like is the barb. What is with the barb? They always have a really, really big exposed barb. You catch a fish, removing the hook is so difficult, is so damaging to the mouth of the fish. I, I try to crush these barbs, but if I'm changing hooks too fast, I can't bother with it either but the barbs on these hooks are too much. Otherwise, I have to tell you the sharpness of the tip. Okay, it's not Japanese sharp, but I believe this is better than any eagle claw. I believe this is kind of similar to Mustad. I believe this hook is sharp enough. I mean, there are some degrees of sharpness like in these JDM hooks where it doesn't matter if you make it sharper than that because making it sharper does not increase the benefit. So yeah, I believe the hooks are sharp enough just that the wire is too thick, the barb is too big and the eye just sticks too much and you kind of have to form the final shape with the pliers. But still, they are pretty cheap and I don't know, if you plan on snagging a lot, you can buy some. These are, these are not what you're going to buy from AliExpress. I just buy the, the jig hooks, I put the lead myself and then I paint them myself. I have videos about how I make, how I put the lead and how I paint them. I'm going to add that video in the description as well. But that's it. That's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.